In our lesson on Sunday morning as well as yesterday, we talked about the subject of fear and how we as Christians do not need to be in fear whenever we face the possibility of persecution. We talked yesterday how the example that is set for us in the scriptures is that rather than fearing those that would seek to harm us, that we are to love them and to strive to teach them by example. But today, we're going to look at the fact that the scriptures command us that when we are in fear, that we're to fight. Now, you may be thinking, now, just a minute there, you just said that we're to love our enemies and to teach them and to guide them. So how does this mesh together? If we are to love and do good to all of our enemies, then how are we to fight against them as well? Well, before we go out and begin taking up guns and knives and swords and striving to cut off our neighbor's ear, maybe we should take a closer look at the weapons that we're told to use and the way that God wants us to fight. If we're to change the direction of our nation, our world is going to have to change. And the way that it's going to change, those of us who are children of God are going to have to stand up and fight. We're going to have to be fearless in our opposition to sin. And God indeed told us to love and do good to our enemies. But we need to keep in mind that loving and doing good to them includes trying to save them from condemnation. Friends, that is the ultimate display of love that we can show for our enemies. Lead them to the truth. That's the only way that this messed up world we live in is going to turn around. We're told to fight. We're told to be aggressive. We're told to be on the offense and to carry the fight to the enemy. We're told to be bold and to fear not. But let's take a look at the weapons of war that Christians are to use. Paul wrote concerning Christian warfare in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 and 4, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Paul says the weapons of the Christian is not like the weapons of our enemies. They are mighty. They're better. They're stronger. They accomplish a better and more complete result. The writer of Hebrews wrote concerning this in Hebrews 4 and verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Here the writer of Hebrews says, The word of God is sharper. It is more powerful than any sword our enemies could wield. He says that our weapons are better. And we as Christians are to carry the fight to the enemy using the most powerful weapon ever conceived, which is the Word of God. Now let's read Paul's description of the Christian's weaponry, the arsenal that's given to us. In Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17, he writes, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now think for just a moment. Breastplates are there to protect our hearts. Therefore, let's guard our hearts with what's right. He goes on, And your feet shod with the preparation or the knowledge of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So notice what our weapons are. They are truth, righteousness, knowledge, faith, and salvation. These are the weapons that we're to use. Yes, we use them because we love our enemies. 
because we want to do good to them and we want to win them to Christ. And so we fight. We stand up against the powers of darkness and we fight for the souls of our enemies using the spiritual weapons that God has given to us. Christians, do not be afraid. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he, referring to Christ, hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do to me. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today and have a blessed day.